Good evening. My name is Denise Douglas, and I'm here to discuss the book, Why Can't We Just Get Along, by Shelley Hendricks. Since I'm the last presenter in this series, I've decided to do a recap of the book, starting with chapter one, It's Not You, It's Me. How many times have we quantified our actions by stating this when it comes to relationships? It's not you, it's me. It's our, it's our go-to phrase, but what it really is is a cop-out to our insecurities. We say it, we've forgotten what, we say it, we've forgotten what the Bible tells us and what we know, and that is God should always be the center of our lives. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Shelley tells us that God's glory is best made through relationships. Scripture tells us, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Those who walk with Christ bring the presence of God to everyone around them. Relationships should be lasting and in many ways shape who we are. Who were your first friends? What was your first relationship? And how has that had a lasting impact on you, you today? My first friend was Sharon Bunker. She lived three doors down from my house. She was the first friend I had outside my brother or my sisters. How did she shape or have a lasting impact on me? She introduced me to music, not R&B or soul music, which was listened to at my house all the time, but she introduced me to groups like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and other pop pop artists. Because of that introduction, I still enjoy all genres of music. Sharon also introduced me to trendy things, hip things, mod things, which I still enjoy to this day. Just like so many childhood things, acquaintances, friends that we grew up with, we also grew apart as the years went on but we have recently connected through via Facebook. Isn't Facebook great? People who were in our lives at one time or another and we lost contact with, we've all, we've all connected via Facebook. Sharon and I have found that we still have many things still in common. She still likes flashy hip things she still likes the music that we grew up with, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, the Who, and so on and so forth. Most relationships with God begin in our childhood. My introduction to Christ, like so many others, came via my mother. Every Sunday morning, I'm sure it was a hassle for her to say, come on, let's go to church. My brother and my sisters and I would kick, scream, holler, whatever, because we just didn't want to be there. But that wasn't an argument we were ever going to win. It was not a choice. Who knew back then how effective Sunday school or church would be and how effective it would be in molding and shaping us into the people we are today. Like many, I didn't realize how a little song like Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, For the Bible Tells Me So, would save me as an adult and have me delving into the word of our, our God. Who knew how the Lord's Prayer or the 23rd Psalms would also save me as an adult? The things that we thought 
were not important or insignificant. They have become a part of our everyday life now. And, they, and the lessons we learn then will stick with us forever. Shelley's next chapter, what, What's Love Got to Do With It? You know, we all know the song. Tina Turner sang it best. What's love got to do with it? It's just a secondhand emotion. But I'm here to tell you, love is so much more. John 4, 8 says, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. John 4, 19 says, we love because he first loved us. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Let all that you do be done in love. I could go on and on and on about the scriptures about love. But I'm here to tell you, love has everything to do with it. We have to love ourselves before we can love others. Before we can love ourselves, we have to first believe that God loves us. We have to believe that God's love is unconditional. It doesn't matter who you are, what, what color your skin is, or even what you've done throughout your life. If you believe in God's love, you can project that love onto others. It is said that hurt people hurt people. It means that if someone has been hurt in their past, they often hurt others because it's what they know. It, sometimes it's all they know. It has also been said that loved people love people. When you've been loved and guided throughout your life, it's more natural to share love and guidance with others. John 4.10 says, this is love, not because we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. When you accept God's love, you'll share his love. And once it, it will have a lasting impact on their relationships with others. When you know love, you share love. Many women struggle with friendships or relationships with other women. Why? You would think that they should be able to talk or to relate to each other. Women need friendship with other women. It's in our makeup. It's something that is biologically built in us. Personally, I have to have my daily dose of girl talk with my posse, my friends, my besties, whatever you want to call them. They get me and I get them. I also have to have my daily talk with God because he grounds me. It is easier for us to see God's love for others before we see his love for us. We see others' accomplishments or status before we even see our worth. We don't always recognize that God has blessed us in so many ways, only in different ways from others. Sometimes it's hard for us to realize that we are all his children. We just have to believe. Our greatest wounds or disappointments come from relationships, but so do our greatest healings. How often have we been heartbroken by those we call sisters, brothers, friends, family? You name it, we've been hurt. But how often have we been elated by these same sisters, brothers, family, friends? Like many, I sometimes speak before I think about what I'm saying. 
We're all guilty of this. Things pop out of our mouth, right and left. Things that we wish <laughs> never would have happened. I just wish sometimes that I could take things back, but we know that's not going to happen. That's when I pray for guidance. And always through his guidance, I can make things better. I want to say once again that God should always be the center of our lives. I know he's the center of my life. God wants us to have relationships. The only true path to freedom is being a living sacrifice to our God. In order to be a living sacrifice, we have to offer ourselves to God for life. We have to believe who God says we are and believe in what he has promised each and every one of us. We cannot waver. We cannot doubt. We must believe. It has been said that humility attracts grace. What does this mean? Peter tells us that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That's 1 Peter 5.5. 5. God opposes the proud. He's against the proud. He is against the arrogant of the proud. If you want to attract God's grace, be humble. The most honest, humble people you'll ever meet are the ones who have the healthiest outlook on who they are and where they want to go. They're the ones who knows God, who know God, and their steps are ordered in his word. Shelley says, big girls don't cry. Well, we all know that that's not true. I'm a big girl. I cry all the time. What does she mean by this? Well, we've all been around women who are critical, cynical, or always seems like they are competing against us. Sometimes they say or do hurtful things because of that cynicism or just them being critical. How many times has someone said to you, oh, I don't like your hair and you thought it looked good, or, or that's hurtful. You know, it is what it is. If we were children, it would be like, mine is bigger than yours, or mine is better than yours, and so on and so forth. But we're not children anymore. We are adults, and we need to act as adults. Women who crit criticize others, are insecure with themselves and are confused about who they are. They are insecure with the love God has for them and even confused about their love for God. We should pray for them and forgive their transgressions. Let me say that again. We should pray for them and forgive their transgressions. Finally, there is hope for all of us. Regardless of the sometimes dysfunctional ways we, we relate to each other, God's love can transform us all into women who make this world a better place. Be a cheerleader and not a Debbie Downer to one another. We must encourage rather than tear down. We must be the light that God wants us to be. We are all one in the body of Christ. We must bless one another and the world in which we live. Live your life. Live the life God has given you. Live your true identity and not the identity that others want us to live. We all need friends. We all need relationships. However, we must choose our friends carefully and according to God's word. In closing, we represent Jesus best when we offer grace to others. If you haven't read the book, Why Can't We Just Be Friends? Or Why Can't We Just Get Along? I'm sorry, I'm reading another book. 
um, I advise you to read it. It's, it's, it's enlightening. And I may not have spoken the way Shelley read it, but I found it very, very helpful in relationships. Um, I thank you and good night.